Mamma Mia is basically my dream, my dream life, right? Mm -hmm. But even in Mamma Mia, I don't know if you remember this or not, the main character, Donna, mm -hmm. one of the opening songs is her complaining about how this hotel that she owns is breaking down and she doesn't have a husband and she doesn't have any money to fix it. I've been running this hotel for 15 years and I have never had a day off. Oh my God! I feel like that goes to show everyone, even my dream life, Donna from Mamma Mia, struggles with finances. How can we get better? at finance. There's this book that I came across a long, long time ago and it, it was appalling to me. Um, oh. It was like, it was something about how to get rich, how to be a millionaire. Mm. And then I was reading the preface and it basically said, if you conduct your life like a business, you have lawyers, you have accountants, you have everybody around you that helps you do all of these things, then you will be rich. And hire me, hire my team, and then we will be able to do that for you. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> First of all, why would you want to live your life like a business? That sounds miserable. Yeah, yeah. So years later, now thinking back on it, it's actually true, but just was said in the exact wrong way, hmm. right? The PR team must have been, been horrible. <laughs> uh, the tax system, the government, the earning, the wages, investment. The system that we live in, a lot of it is skewed in favor of those who are in power. And so these are sort of indisputable truths. So I think the premise of the book if it was, if you want to be rich, behave like the rich. So one way to get better at finances mm -hmm. is to just conduct your life accordingly. And if you just understand a little bit of it, you will get much further ahead than doing the traditional way of trying to increase your salary, trying to work really, really hard and save up, right? And, and there are things that everybody could do, starting a business writing off expenses, build up your own branding so that you become a person of value as opposed to just trading your time, your hours for money instead of just doing, you know, labor. And those are all the core concepts, mm. right? Because you have to build up equity. And if you're just trading continuously time for money, then you'll never be rich. So for most people that don't have like tons of fun to invest mm. and have a t huge tax return to try to, to reduce taxes, there's still a lot of things that they can do individually, investing in the right accounts. And I think there's so many videos on this already, so I don't even want to say it, but you know, like the difference between Roth IRA and the difference between uh, funding a 529 college plan for your kids. Like there's all these little things that you can already do and that that rich do. You just don't have to do it in the same amount, but just doing a little bit in the right way. My next question, my next area of interest, mm -hmm. um, how do I, <laughs> I feel silly even saying it, how do I get smarter? How do I be smarter? <laughs> how can I just be smarter? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, it's so hard, right? <laughs> it's so hard. If there's a way to instantly be smart, if you could just take a pill or something, that will, that will be like a trillion dollar industry, oh right? Yeah. And planning trips, all sorts of stuff. I mean, mm. mankind would like, would like worship you as God if you <laughs> figure that out. But for most people, if they just do this one thing, if they just know their own learning style mm. and how they thrive and what's most efficient and good for them, mm. they would be so much smarter. I like to read. I hate attending lectures. I don't learn from listening. I could sit in a lecture, listen four hours, go home, and I don't remember. But I could sit there with a book and I could skim through the entire thing in four hours. Mm. So how should I spend my time? I should just read and don't go to lecture. Some people are the exact opposite. And some people don't like to read, don't like to go to lectures, but they like doing. So if they just do the practice test and they learn from their mistakes, if they learn by doing, and they could do that for four hours. I, I would hate to just take the test again and again without learning at first, right? So everybody has their own learning style. If you don't know your own learning style, the best environment for you to learn, the best time that you're learning, right? Some people learn well in the morning, some people learn well at night. Block out whatever time is most valuable to you and learn in the style that you are best at absorbing. Some people learn best by teaching. Some people learn best by listening as a pupil. Some people learn better in groups. Some people learn better in, in a solitary environment in the mountains. Whatever it is, <laughs> find, like, yes. find that and double down and triple down on it. Yeah, I, I think mine is probably reading. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. But I'm just thinking, 
like for myself, you can almost rely on what got you to be intelligent in school and really develop those skills and almost like use it as a crutch. So it's like, yes, I'm smart in this particular area, but now I just lean on that so heavily because that's what's brought me success this whole time mm -hmm. that I'm really deficient in these other areas. When you're young, you're smart, people brand you as smart, mm -hmm. but that might not get you very far. You're always set up for a new challenge, right? Mm -hmm. What's the benefit of succeeding the curses? You have to fight another battle, right? Mm -hmm. It was so hard to get in high school. After high school, you're so hard to get in college. You have to survive college. Other people are doing one major, you have to do three. <laughs> After college, you have to go to law school. After law school, you have to bar. It's mm -hmm. all it does, all your hard work, all this branding of excellence mm -hmm. just means, okay, now we are gonna grant you as a society a new opportunity for you to fight again, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and whatever got you there might not continue, right? right? What gets you into a firm to work, You, if you're bad with dealing with people, you might not get along with colleagues, mm -hmm. you might not perform well, you might get fired. If you, if, you, if you get along with colleagues and you're really smart, but if you don't deal well with clients, mm -hmm. that might get you fired, right? Or you might leave or you might be miserable. So in order to succeed, really, it takes so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the field of intellect, be smart. Um, so my advice really for almost everyone, at a very young age, as soon as possible, discover what's easy for you to do, double down on that. What's really, really difficult to do for you, that's seemingly easy for others, uh, be mindful of it and improve that a little bit. Just doing these two things will get you so far. How can we become better cooks? I won't say for everybody. It's like, I don't have the time to cook. You know, I don't have the time to like, cause it's art. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't have time to get all these fresh ingredients and like lay them all out and, and learn and you know, smell it. Like mm -hmm. to me, it's like a luxury and an art that I just never have the time for. But I would like to be good at it so I can impress my friends and you know, <laughs> be fun at parties and be like, yes, I made that. <laughs> but I just, I guess it's a time thing and a perception of, you know, I, I'm just not good at that and it'll take a lot of work to be good at that mm -hmm. and I just don't have that sort of time right now. One of the things is just to master the basics hmm. of another culture. Mm. Learn the basics, the five minute meals from Japanese cooking, Middle Eastern cooking. Learn the five minute meals for any other country that you're not familiar with. Why? Because they've mastered it with their thousands of years of history, boiled it down to these simple ingredients that they can make in within five minutes. Just make the simple ones, the, the ugly delicious ones, the ones that they feed their kids, the one that they, oh, they cook all the time. Yeah. The five minute cuisines, because they're gonna use the key ingredients mm. that makes their cuisine special. And then once you master those five minute ones from Japan, from, from the Middle East, and then you put all that together, then suddenly you master the whole world of cooking. What are some like of your top, like easy, quick starter recipes that you'd recommend? Costco, oxtail. So oxtail? It's, 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 it's expensive, but in Costco it's cheaper. You cook all of it in a instant pot. So oh. what, like an hour? Yeah. Then you take off the meat, then you have the broth, and you have carrots, and you have onions. So that itself is mm. super good. Just and a simple. beginner? Is that like beginner level? You're literally boiling water. <laughs> so for the bone broth. Good for me, yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you just need to press buttons. So it's not anything crazy, but it's so good. Relationships are like this tangled web of mess, you know, where there's like emotions and, and communication with friends, family, significant others, and, and it's every single relationship is so different, but they're, <laughs> they're just so hard. They're so hard. So how could I get better at relationships? How can we get better at relationships? It comes down to actually pretty simple principles. If you know your love language as well, and if you know your apology language as well, If you can do those two well with the people in your life, your relationship will be so much better. Love language and apology language doesn't just apply to couples. It applies to 
uh, your colleagues, your boss, your customers, anybody who you're in contact with, love them accordingly. What are the ways that they need to feel like you you said sorry and apologize accordingly? People don't receive love the way you give love, right? And just because you love them doesn't mean they feel it. So. Communication is very important in the sense, you, I mean, people always focus on communication. What does that mean? It means <laughs> making sure that they actually heard what you're trying to say. Knowing these two principles is not going to make all of your relationships suddenly bloom, but it will make it better. And that's the hey. point of our talk, right? <laughs>